Good afternoon, Dwayne Crumley with Friendship Baptist Church in Killen, Alabama. Thank you for tuning in today and everywhere I go, I seem to hear people say that they are wanting to have a happy life. They wish things would get back to normal. Uh, they're worried about the future, worried about their job, worried about their family, and I, and I certainly understand that. However, most of us try to live according to the world standards and the world standards will not bring us happiness, uh, contentment, and peace like Jesus has promised. So today I'd like to give you some points that I'd like to say will give you a prosperous and a happy and content life. But you need to apply these to your heart. Every one of them is found in the Bible. And we're going to go through them very quickly. So the first one is uh, set your priority according to God's word. Proverbs 3 and 1 says this, says, My son, do not forget my teachings and keep my commandments in mind. Proverbs 3 and 2 says, Because they will bring you a long life, good years, and peace. Now, did you catch that? Make God a priority in your life. Proverbs 3 and 3 says, Do not let mercy and truth leave you. Fasten them around your neck and write them on the table of your heart. Wow. Wow. We need to remember that God's word is a priority. His word is for our benefit, not for his. And he certainly has told us how to have a wonderful, wonderful life. Next thing, in, uh, we need to rely on the wisdom of God, the wisdom and the power of God. Don't rely on your own knowledge. I hate to hurt anybody's feelings, but we were never designed to guide our own footsteps. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths smooth. See, we can rely on God. However, we get in a hurry. We want things our way. We forget to rely on God. God can do things that we cannot even imagine. God knows the right way. God knows uh, the future. And he knows your heart. So we need to rely on him. And that's where faith comes in. See, relying and trusting God will show God that you love him. Because you do trust him, see. And we need to see the world and see our problems through the eyes of God. Well, if we see our problems in the world through the eyes of God, then we'll realize we don't have any problems because God has taken care of them. The next thing we need to do to have a uh, happy, prosperous, content, and peaceful life is to obey God's word and not your own will or your own desires. Proverbs 3 and 7, do not consider yourself wise. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Proverbs 3 and 8, then your body will be healed and your bones will have nourishment. If you look at the world today, you see people that are rushing out to have fun, to do their own thing, uh, to do what the world says is successful, to do what the world says is the right thing. And most of the time, the world will lead you down the wrong path. We need to obey God. God gave us certain commandments because uh, not to hurt us, not to limit us, not to stop our fun, but to protect us. And you know, if you follow God's word and just follow the Ten Commandments, think about what a life we'd have. And you look at all the things that are going on in the world today. If we put others before ourselves, as God tells us to, we wouldn't have these problems. If we put our wife before ourselves, we wouldn't have these problems. If we put our kids before ourselves, we wouldn't have all the divorce and all the, the problems that we have in the world today. See, God has a plan for our future but we can only come to the end of that plan by obeying him. And our faith is what allows us to get up in the morning. And I know people who dread getting up in the morning and it's because their faith is in themselves or their job or their bank account or their money or anything like that. So we need to realize that our faith is in God and he is why we can get up in the morning. The next thing is we need to acknowledge God's ownership of everything. Well, what does that mean? Well, we need to realize that God is in control. He has given us everything that we need. 
Everything that we have comes from God. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from God. So if you have food on the table, clothes in the closet, a car in the driveway, gas in the car, a healthy family, everything comes from God. He's the one that gives us the strength to get up and go to work to earn our living. And we need to realize that we need to thank him for that. We need to realize that he has given us all these blessings, not so we can keep them to ourselves, but so we can bless others. We need to realize that the world out there is looking for people who care. And the only way we're going to show them that we care is by giving to them. And when I say giving, the first thing you think of, of course, is money. And it certainly may be true that that's what God wants you to give. Uh, you know, he only asked us to give 10%. We get to keep 90. And a member of our church who has gone on to be with the Lord always said this, you can't outgive God. And I would challenge you to try that. But God doesn't only want us to give of our money. It may not be what he wants from you. It may be your time. Maybe your service, maybe yourself. He, he wants you to give your priority, your will over to him. Lord, we are actually benefiting ourselves. So that brings me to the next point. Be teachable. <laughs> Be teachable. Proverbs 3 and 11. Do not reject the discipline of the Lord, my son, and do not resent his warning because the Lord warns the one he loves. And even as a father warns a son with whom he is pleased. The Bible said God chastens those whom he loves. Listen, God gives us correction, not because he hates us, but because he loves us. I used to think that my parents were the meanest parents in town. But now looking back, after both of them were dead and gone, I'd give anything if I could tell them that they were right. I needed that. They showed me that they loved me. How did they do it? By disciplining me, by taking time out of their life to make sure that I stayed on the straight path. God wants us to obey him. He says to obey is better than sacrifice. And I can assure you, there are thousands of people. If you could talk to them right now, they would say this, I'd give anything if I had listened to my parents. I wouldn't be in the mess I'm in today. I wish I had listened to God, but I wouldn't be in the mess I am today. We need to realize that God is trustworthy and he wants us to obey him. The next thing is ask for wisdom. Ask for wisdom. Proverbs 3.21, my son, do not lose sight of these things. Use priceless wisdom and foresight. Then they will mean life for you and they will grace your neck. Listen to God's wisdom. He, he knows everything. He, he knows which path to take. He knows which step to take. He knows uh, where the rattlesnakes are, if you would, in the road. He knows where the curves are in the road. But then it goes on in Proverbs 3.20c, and it says this, If you will listen to my wisdom, then you will go safely on your way, and you will not hurt thy foot. And when you lie down, you will not be afraid as you lie there. Your sleep will be sweet. We need to realize that God's wisdom... Well, he'll give it to us if we ask. Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, God told him to ask for anything he wanted and he asked for wisdom. I'm afraid that most of us would ask to win the lottery, new car, new house, stuff. <laughs> he asked for wisdom. We need to ask for wisdom. The next thing, we should not be afraid. We should not be afraid to take the step of faith. Proverbs 3.25, do not be afraid of the sudden terror or of the destruction of wicked people when it comes. The world right now is wicked and we all are afraid if we would be honest with yourself. But it goes on in 3.26 to say the Lord will be your confidence. He will keep your foot from getting caught. Why are we afraid? Oh, we stand up and we say, yeah, God created us. God has it and then let, we let fear come in. When God tells us to witness to our neighbor, we need to listen. Shouldn't be afraid. When God calls us to get out of our comfort zone, we shouldn't be afraid. We need to realize today that God will protect us. He has proven that over and over and over, 
and we need to realize that. The next thing to bring us peace, prosperity, and contentment is to consider other people. Practice compassion and sympathy with people who are different, less fortunate, rude, mean, arrogant, whatever you want to call them. Proverbs 3.27, do not hold back anything good from those who are entitled to it when you have the power to do so. When you have the good thing with you, do not tell your neighbor, go away, come back tomorrow, I'll give you something then. He's saying today is the day. If you have the power to encourage someone, do it. If you have the power to feed someone, do it. If you have the power to close someone, do it. If you have the power to pray for someone, do it. That's what God is calling us to do. And then the next thing to bring us prosperity and peace and contentment, be at peace with all people. <laughs> Proverbs 3.29, do not plan to do something wrong to your neighbor while he is sitting there with you and suspecting nothing. Do not quarrel with the person for no reason if he has not harmed you. Well, right there, preacher, wait a minute. If he's harmed me, I can do whatever I want to. No, that's not what it's saying. The Bible says in the New Testament that we are to love others as ourselves, And I don't know of anyone who tries to harm themselves. The best way you're going to demonstrate you're a Christian is to live peaceably with other people, to give them the coat and the cloak, <laughs> and to show them that you're different. Look at the Apostle Paul, how he was treated. Look at Stephen, how he was treated. Look at Jesus, how he was treated. And yet he loved others. The next, next thing we need to do is be satisfied with what you have and to be thankful to God. Proverbs 3.31, do not envy a violent person and do not choose any of his ways. The devious person is disgusting to the Lord and the Lord's intimate advice is with decent people. <laughs> you know, we have a lot of rich people that we envy. We see people all the time uh, who have things that we don't have and we wonder how they got them. You know, I, I've preached a lot of funerals. I've been at the bedside of many a person who died. I've been at the bedside of saints when they died, and I've been at the bedside of evil, wicked people when they died. But I've never heard one of them say this, I wish I had more stuff. Every one of them will say things like, I wish I had more time or I wish I had spent more time with my family. Well, see, we look at the world and we're envious, and David certainly had this problem at one time in his life. In the psalm, he tells us, in fact, he goes to God, and I want to encourage you when you are upset, go to God and talk to him. David went to God and said, God, man, the wicked are prospering. Man, I'm, I'm out living in caves. I, uh, I, I love you and you love me, but I'm living in caves, and man... They're having a great time. They're partying, they're eating, they're getting fat. They have the world by the tail. And then the Psalm says this. It says, David went to the sanctuary. Well, what does that mean? It means that he went and talked to God. And after he went and talked to God and, and David vented and told God how he felt, God revealed to him things that he needed him to know. And here's what David said at the end of Psalms, I think it's 78. He said, okay, Lord, I get it. What they have now is all they're gonna have. I have you, God. I have peace, I have contentment. I have everything that I'll ever need, no matter what the world says. And listen, these things that I've told you to have a prosperous life does not mean you're gonna be rich does not mean you're going to be uh, have all of the money you want. When I say a prosperous life, I'm talking about a life at peace with Jesus Christ and with other people. I'm talking about the peace that can only come from John the 14th chapter, like Jesus told the disciples when they were facing the worst time in their life. He said, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives you peace, because the world's peace is fleeting. Jesus said, I'll give you peace that will never leave. So I'd encourage you to get out the book of Proverbs. That was just out of the third chapter. And read what it says. Ask Jesus Christ for wisdom. Ask him for peace. 
and ask him like the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul said, I have learned to be content in whatever state I'm in. Now that doesn't mean that it was a mind over matter thing. Here's what it meant. It meant that he learned that Jesus Christ loved him and that no matter what the world threw at him, Jesus was enough. Jesus is enough today and he'll be enough forever. I'd like to thank you for listening to our little church by the road. Uh, please drop us a line, P.O. Box uh, 3, Killing, Alabama, 35645. You can find us on Facebook or YouTube or also on a website, but we'd love to hear from you. Little Church by the Road is definitely different. God is doing a great work there. We are growing in spirit and in numbers. And I promise you this, if you'll give us a try, you, you will be loved on, you will be welcomed, and you will be made to feel at home. Pray for us as we pray for you, and certainly if we can do anything for you, we would love to know about it, and we promise you we'll do all we can. Thanks for listening.